that. Well, it was a magical time, a wasn't magical it? Magical time, absolutely. So the deal was that they would have entertainment from eight to nine o'clock here on this That's stage, right. and right. then the suspense would build. And it would not only build here at Camp Curry, but all around the valley, because everybody knew that at nine o'clock this fire was going to fall, and it was spectacular, and it it riveted. Uh, campers and all the campgrounds that could look up at Camp Curry and from the lodge where you could not see Glacier Point, those people would come up into the meadows and, uh, and watch it from uh, some vantage point where they could see it. So you keep, no, you know, there it is right up here. That's that right. is Glacier Point Glacier up there. Point. That's some where the fire would fall. That's correct. Some 3,000 feet above us. So, okay, it's 9 o'clock. Right. And back in what years did you call the fire fall? I called the firefall in the late 30s and up till 42, off and on. And then in the second year of our marriage, uh, which would have been 1956, and my wife was pregnant with our first child, we came to Camp Curry and uh, then on a Twally Meadows, and I put her on the outside right back there in this auditorium because the manager of the uh, Curry here had asked me to call the firefall to surprise her I called the firefall that night. <laughs> so it was a big deal to be asked to call the firefall. Oh, it was. And there was a competition for loud voices, and I guess I had the loudest voice. Is that what the criteria was, just whoever had the loudest voice? Well, personality looks, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, so it would get to be 9 o'clock. That's correct. And where would you be? Would you be here be, on stage? Uh, I'd be on uh, stage, uh, stage right, uh, looking out. And, uh, would there be a spotlight on you? Would a spotlight would be on, not on me personally or on the, on the fire caller. It was on the entertainment. And at that time, there were two groups, the Lindemann sisters uh, and their mother, who uh, was a very close friend of uh, Mrs. Curry. Okay, now, so wh where are you? Where are you going to be? I walk right up here, <laughs> and I stand here, and the spot is on myself and the entertainment. Uh -huh. But it slowly narrows down so that I'm in the dark. Uh -huh. And uh, so it's focusing on the entertainment. And then you would do what? Oh, actually, there was a flashlight signal uh, from, oh, I don't know, somewhere over in here that would signal up that they were ready, that the two people, generally two people, that would continuously push these falls off, as mm -hmm. Nick Fiore explained, so that you got this constant feeling of, of, uh, of a fire fall like, like water coming over right. a waterfall and then you would start your call but you had to start the call so that it was synchronized that when the last call came back from Glacier Point that at that moment the fire started to fall if the fire started to fall during the calls obviously it was a miscue okay so let's let's run through this do it for us it's nine o'clock nine o'clock all right well the flashlight signals have indicated that they're ready to go Then the return call would be, hello, Camp Curry, or sometimes just, hello, Curry. Love the fire! Fall! Great suspense. And then there'd be a response and from then... Glacier Point, and at that point, within a matter of seconds, the fire would start to fall. And, and then, as the music historian, the music they would fire. play... Well, I get to be the Lindemann sisters here. <laughs> <laughs> and they would sing... When I'm calling you... Will you answer to... Just waiting all alone. But if when you hear my love call ringing clear, and I 
hear your answering echoes so deep Then I will know Belong to me, I'll belong to you. Then there would usually be a pause, and I have seen many people cry at the end of that program. And it would be what seemed like minutes, but I'm sure it was 30 seconds or so. And then there'd be a slow sound of a few people bold enough to clap, uh, to break what was really a, almost a spiritual uh, church experience. And then pretty soon the crescendo of the clapping. And you could hear the clapping from the meadows and all around the valley afterwards. It was, uh, I get very emotional even thinking about it now. I get and emotional uh, hearing you yeah, talk about yeah. it. It's a, it's a very emotional experience. And, uh, and uh, a lot of people would actually cry. Well, the old firefall is gone. I guess the last one fell in 19...